All right. So today is Monday. I got this Bobcat on Wednesday, and I really haven't had time to drive it or do anything with it. In fact, I took the forestry mulcher off at them right after I got it because I had to take the tr uh, bucket off the trailer and haven't put it back on since. I've kind of fooled around with my uh, demo dozer bucket a little bit and just kind of drove it around here a little bit, but I'm going to uh, come back here and do a little mulching. I did some this summer back here and I've got all this junk piled up back here. It's a lot easier to, <clears throat> a lot easier to see what's going on back here now um, that all the leaves are down. This is just some stuff that I had taken out of the yard. We had a tree fall down or half fall down. And um, I just kind of piled everything back here because I thought, you know what? Eventually I'm going to get a forestry mulcher and I'll just throw it there and grind it up then. So you can kind of see what I what I did here in the summer and I didn't get as far as I wanted to. I kind of got stuck back here a little bit and but I'm going to take some more of this out. I don't want to completely deforest it, but I do. You can see all this um, junk that's back here. So I'm going to try to get it cleaned out some without taking the big trees out. And uh, And this will be the first run. Golly, there's a lot of stuff down in there. So, like I said, I don't want to take all the stuff out, but boy, there is a bunch of junk back in there. So, let's get out here and see what we can get into. Here I am using the demo dozer a little bit and I mentioned that I'd used it just a just a little tiny bit the last couple of days, but uh, learning the controls in this is just so different from my other Bobcat. So this I was kind of I've got to sped up a little bit because I was just kind of doing everything really slowly here at the beginning. But um, this is going to be a great great tool to go along with uh, the forestry mulcher. Um, in fact, I'll probably be when I'm doing mulching jobs, I'll probably, in some cases, I'll have uh, my other guy there with the uh, with the other bobcat, you know, running the demo dozer and keeping, you know, doing kind of like I'm doing here is just moving stuff into the into the mulch zone um, so that I don't have to, you know, run everywhere with it. Here I am with the very first cut. It was kind of exciting. Um, I kind of tiptoed into it the first time didn't want to I was just really curious to see how well it was going to cut before I had not used one with, with uh, brand new carbides before and it really did cut a lot better I kind of speed this up here in a minute because you can't really see what's going on over there but um right from the get-go pretty pleased with it now just so you all know and you might have seen this just by reading in the comments or reading in the in the descriptions or whatever but uh, um, I've kind of started a new line of business here and um, and just so you know if anybody's interested I'll go ahead and explain it um, started a new line of business and and kind of have treated it like us kind of starting a new business altogether but it's not really um, but anyway I'm calling it uh, Southwest Virginia land clearing and the idea behind that is um, you know that as time goes on hopefully the you know the land clearing and the forestry mulching will will really pick up and um, you know and maybe in a, in a year or two years or five years or whatever you know will be more um, you know forestry mulching and land clearing and less kind of general bobcat uh, stuff and um, if that's the case it would be more appropriate to call it something uh, like Southwest Virginia Land Clearing 
And so I went ahead and, and kind of kind of planned for that. So we came up with a whole new logo and a whole new domain name and a whole new email address and a whole new YouTube site. And um, but they're all, you know, basically it's two. It's like two businesses operating under the same umbrella. So I've got this one under the Merit Skid Steer Services uh, channel for now. Um, uh, instead of putting it under the uh, Southwest Virginia land clearing um, site, um, and mostly because this is, I, I, th I think over there when I start doing, you know, when I'm doing real jobs, um, you know, I'll I'll put those videos over there. Um, this right here is more like uh, an announcement. Hey, the you know the the business is expanding. We've got a new tool we've got a new basically a new set of tools here that um, is going to take us in a uh, you know potentially pretty dramatically different direction and it's exciting I'm, I'm really really I've wanted to do this for for quite a long time now and um, uh, and it just I finally started really doing the research on it this summer and realized hey this isn't uh, this isn't impossible in fact it's it seems to be very doable so um, a lot of research has gone into it and, and have done lots and lots of work, um, you know, to make this happen. And we finally got to the point here in just in the last couple of weeks and, and um, you know, my wife and I finally finally sat down and hashed it out and said, okay, it's, it's time to move on this. So, um, uh, so anyway, all that to say, if, um, if you've not been to the Southwest Virginia Land Clearing, um, YouTube site yet. I'll have a, a link to it in the description uh, and a link to the website over there and you can just go have a peek at that and um, uh, if you if you would if you're subscribed to this I would just ask that you would go subscribe to that too. I'd really appreciate that. The, the idea of course everybody always asks you to do that. The reason is not really for marketing. The reason is really for monetization. That's what people want to be able to eventually monetize and um, you know, you have to hit some minimum thresholds, and, and, you know, I'm a long, long way away from them, but, uh, you know, um, you know, if you, if you put content out there that people are interested in, then, um, you know, it can happen, and you keep, you know, you got to keep putting it out and being consistent and getting, getting the traffic, so, but if, uh, you know, if you would, hit the, hit the like and subscribe on this, and, and if you, uh, if you can, I would appreciate it if you'd pop over to that other site as well and, and hit it there. Um, it's kind of fun watching this. Um, you know, I, I've watched so many videos of, of other people doing this. And I have, you know, I have quite a few videos of myself doing it. But just watching a new one like this um, is pretty cool. I should have moved the camera right here because that big tree at the beginning that's laying over sideways, I should have moved the camera but basically I'm grinding off about the bottom two-thirds of that tree right now and that would have made some pretty good video I guess but um, camera will move here in a minute and then you'll see the little bit of that tree left there oh there it is but what a difference this thing makes in such a short amount of time that's that little little brush pile. When I, the path is, that was down through this um, this little backyard piece of woods that I have here is you can even walk through it. And a couple years ago, I took the took my other bobcat through it and just pushed a bunch of stuff out of the way with the bucket just to make a path so that you could walk down through there. And then over the summer, I came down with a mulcher and just kind of mulched it a little bit, um, made the path a little bit wider, but. Um, you know, I want to get in here today and really, really open this up some. And this is kind of this is kind of interesting. The 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 one thing these drum mulchers seem to, you know, potentially run into problems with is when you when you got these trees laying on the ground like this, it, it wants to suck them in all at one time, and um, sometimes it'll, it'll kind of bog them down. That happened a couple times here, but. It kind of shreds them up in the process, so you can see the trunk is still kind of together, but it's kind of shredded up. And then, um, but I love watching these things just kind of come apart. It's it's really, um, particularly this back dragging part. You can 
see all that bunched up underneath and then you back drag over that stuff and I just think watching this in the video is, is really satisfying but I'm, I'm not going to lie doing that in real life is even better <laughs> so um, I just just really I really really enjoy that I think it's cool and I love to be able to do it And there I just cut another little path up through there and I'd cut a path coming down from the top that's off to the left there um, I'd cut that before so I just connected to that there so now there's a little walk through there and um, as I said multiple times in other places in the video um, you know, I'm really making the point to, to, to clear some stuff with, without making it not wood I thought that was kind of fun right here where I put the camera in front and just just throw stuff at it. I had the camera in its protective box um, because it was raining and so I thought I oh, will go ahead and shoot some stuff at it and make some good videos. I think that's kind of fun because that's a view you never get of these mulchers. You never get to see what it looks like when it's pointing directly at you because if it's pointing directly at you and running it's going to beat you to death. So um, anyway. I got a camera in a protective box, so we'll just throw some stuff at it. This was just some stuff that I'd reached up under those bushes to the left there, and there was just so much dead stuff under there. I just reached up under there and started just grabbing stuff by hand and just pulling it out and, and just made a pile there. So that's how some of this is going to end up getting cleared. It would be a lot easier just to clear the whole thing and, you know, like you really just make it an open field, but um, that's not what I'm going for here. All right, so here I am behind my house, and uh, I kind of came down here. I got the railroad tracks down here, um, but uh, I came right down into here. I had a big a uh, pile of kind of brush that was laying right here that I'd kind of pushed down here before. And uh, I had this big tree that was laying here. Um, still a lot to clear back there, but there was a lot of garbage up through here. I took a big dead snag down right there, mulched it up, and there had been a path down through here, but um, already, but I kind of just kind of pushed it out a little bit. It's raining pretty hard right now and the machine's getting all dirty and everything's sticking to it. So I'm just gonna wrap it up for now, but but this is not, I don't know how long I've been doing this, maybe, I don't know, hour and a half maybe, uh, if that. I kind of stopped, threw some stuff out into the path and mulched that up and, and gotten everything yet. Here's part of that big, that's, <laughs> that's the last little bit of that tree trunk that was laying down there. I kind of made a little path that comes around here. And, uh, I'm going to clean her off a little bit, and I'm going to call it a day for right now. It's raining pretty hard, so. But, uh, this is the problem doing it in the rain. It actually, you can mulch just fine in the rain, and traction doesn't seem to be an issue. Um, but you get all this junk that sticks to the windshield, so. When I've done it in the rain before, I've had to have a spray bottle and a squeegee. Um, so every now and then, when it gets real bad, I'd have to get out and squeegee the window off. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna work my way through this, you know, a little bit at a time. I don't wanna completely deforest it, but uh, there's just so much junk in here that it's hard to, it's hard to get to all of it. So um, anyway, that's where we at.